Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. Um, we're on uh, lecture five uh, uh, in the third unit, factors and products. This is all about factoring trinomials. So this is like going backwards um, from what we were doing before. We were taking two binomials and making it a trinomial. Now we are going to take a trinomial and we are going to get it into two binomials. Um, I'll show you how that all works. We have some kind of rules to go through um, first. So let's do that. Um, so the first thing you always do whenever you have um, a trinomial x squared plus bx plus c. Whenever, whenever you have something like that, you're going to check to see if there is a common factor between them that you can factor out. If the greatest common factor is one, um, then you can move on to the next step. So there's gonna be times when we want to um, pull something out um, of the brackets before we can factor the entire thing. Um, so for example, uh, let's look at this right here. When we're factoring x squared plus bx plus c, um, we're going to want to try to make it into two sets of brackets and two binomials beside each other. And if you think about how we made x squared, that was always the first values and x times x. So it's always going to be something like that, whatever variable you have squared in front. And that's why we always changed it to positive uh, in the last lesson. If ever this was a negative uh, value, we always flipped it over to positive. Um, so we have x squared here, and b is the sum of this number and this number. Um, when we're doing outside and inside, that came up with two values that we always put together. So b, let's call this integer as it does in our notes, an integer. b is the sum of those integers. And then the last number that we always got um, that was found by foiling and getting and doing the last numbers in the binomials together uh, was C. So C is equal to the product of those integers. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at a problem and we're going to see what two numbers can multiply to C and add to B. Let's do some problems. It will make a lot of sense as we go on. So, some examples. Let's start with x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we're going to be making it into two binomials, but first we're going to check to see if the greatest common factor here is 1. So, um, x squared here, we have x, but we have no x. So x, no variable can be pulled out. Uh, no number can be pulled out either other than one. So that means we can start um, factoring into two binomials. We place our two sets of brackets and we know that the first uh, part, x squared, is made by multiplying x times x. Now we want to think what two numbers can be multiplied together to get six and added together to get five. Uh, right away I'm thinking 2 times 3 is 6 and then 2 plus 3 is 5 so I have plus 2 and plus 3 and what you can do is you can check this uh, what you would do is you would foil it first outside inside last so x times x is x squared x times 3 3x 2 times x is 2x 2 times 3 is 6 we add these together because they are like terms. x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we've checked and that's correct. Um, always good to check uh, to see if you have it completely. Uh, let's do the next example. We have x squared minus 3x minus 4. Uh, greatest common factor is 1. We can't factor anything out and we know that the first variable, uh, first part is made by x times x. What two numbers then are going to multiply to 4? Negative 4, I should say. Multiply to negative 4 and add to negative 3. 
so it has to be a positive number and a negative number to get a negative number um, as negative 4. So then I'm thinking, uh, how about negative 4 and positive 1? Positive 1 and negative 4. Let's try that out. x times x is x squared. x times minus 4 minus 4x four plus x minus 4. Again, we combine like terms. x squared minus 3x minus 4. We did it. We checked it, and that is correct. So this is our answer. Um, it looks simple, but sometimes it can be difficult to get to. Let's do a couple more examples. I think we've got quite a few more examples to do together. And then some try it on your own. So, a squared minus 10a plus 21 is our next problem. It's just like if we had x's. But we have a's. We have nothing that we can factor out. The greatest common factor is 1. So we place our brackets. a times a would give us a squared. What two things would multiply together to get 21 and add together to, to be minus 10? Um, I'm thinking minus 7 and minus 3 can be multiplied together to get positive 21. So minus 7 and minus 3. And that does work for minus 10 if you add those together. Let's check, just in case. a squared uh, is the first term. a times minus 7. Th minus 3 times a. a. Minus 3 times 7 is plus 21. And then we combine like terms. So we have a squared minus 10a plus 21. So that check is correct. And that is our answer. I like you to put a box around your answer whenever possible um, and then a check by your check just to make sure that you know uh, that you've done it all correctly. Let's change the color of my pen. I'm feeling different. Okay, let's do the next problem. We have e squared plus 4e minus 12. So the greatest common factor again is 1, so I can jump right into writing my two binomials, e times e would get me the first part. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to get negative 12 and add together to positive 4. Multiply and add to positive 4. Um, let's see, what am I thinking here? What should we do? I could do positive 6 and negative 2, because 6 minus 2 is 4. If I did positive 6 and negative 2, let's see how that would work. Um, e times e is e squared. e times negative 2, negative 2e. 6 times e is plus 6e, and then 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. We're going to combine like terms. e squared plus 4e minus 12. I did it. Yes, that was correct plus 6 and negative 2. Uh, sometimes it just takes uh, a little bit of thinking of maybe you do some trial and error. Definitely not a problem. Um, but yeah, you have to go into it with an open mind. Be okay with being wrong once or twice before you get the right answer. It's definitely important. Let's try a couple more and then I think there's some try it on your own. So how many more we got? We got four more together. And then two try it on your own. And then uh, there's quite a few problems for you to try. And an exit slip. So let's get down to it. f squared minus 6f plus 8. Greatest common factor is 1. Jump right into our brackets. f times f would get me the first one. Uh, let's see what two numbers multiply together to get positive 8 and add to negative 6. I'm thinking negative 4 and negative 2. Um, negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. Uh, negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. I believe that is the correct answer. If it's wrong, put it in the comments for me. Let's do the next one. We have g squared minus 6g, sorry, that's plus 6g, minus 10. 
Again, greatest common factor is 1, so we can jump right into our binomials. g is going to be our first value because it is g squared. Look, what two numbers multiply together to get negative 10 and add to positive 6? 10 and 1, 2 and 5, does that work? No. So if no two numbers will multiply together to get negative 10 and add together to get positive 6, Let's think about this just a little bit longer. What if let's write let's write out the, the, the factors of, of negative ten. We could have negative one and ten. We could have one and negative ten. We could have two and negative five. And we could have negative two and five. All of those two pairs or those four pairs multiplied together would get me negative ten. I don't think there are any other ones. Three, four, no. So has to be one of these sets that add to positive 6. So if we add these together, hmm, that is 9, and this is negative 9. So that's not going to work. This one is negative 3, and this one is 3. So that's not going to work either. So when we have nothing that will work, um, we've tried all these. This is good enough for me in terms of work uh, for trying the problem. Uh, what we call this is a prime expression. I don't know why I moved the paper on you guys, I'm sorry. But that is a prime expression. Just like a prime number can't be factored into anything but one in itself, uh, a prime expression cannot be factored any further into two binomials. You could pull a one out, but that would not get you anywhere. So it is very similar to numbers like 17, 19, um, seven numbers that only one in itself multiplied together to get. So that is a prime expression. So you were, you would be able to write prime expression or cannot factor. Um, and that would be full marks for that one. Again, I'd like to see your work in terms of trying it, um, setting up all the different factors and seeing what multiplies together to get 10 and adds to six. But, um, yeah, that's a prime expression and only one in itself multiply to uh, to get it. Let's do a few more problems and then you've got some try it on your owns where you can pause the video and get down uh, to see if you got it. Let's do 2i plus 12i, sorry that's 2i squared, pardon me, plus 12i plus 18. So I look at the variables, no common variables, but there is a common number, 2 between all of them. So I'm going to pull a 2 out of each of these, and then I'm going to factor that new expression. So I've got 2 multiplied by i squared plus 6 times 2 would get me 12. So that's 6i. 9 times 2 would get me 18, so that's plus 9. Now I'm going to factor that bracket. I'm just going to drag the 2 along with me here. So I've got uh, 2 and my two brackets. I've got i as the variable, so that goes in front. Uh, I'm looking for something that multiplies to 9 and adds to 6. Uh, let's see, I'm thinking 3 and 3. Those are the factors of 9 other than 1 and 9. So if I've got plus 3 and plus 3, uh, 3 times 3 is 9, i times 3 is plus 3, 3 times i is plus 3, that does get me 6. Uh, that is what I would expect to be in the box um, for your answer. What we can do is, I will do it for this one, but probably not for the next one, is multiply everything together to see if we get the original expression again. So let's do this. Um, we've got i times i, so this is 2 times i squared, i times 3 plus 3i, three, 3 times i is plus 3i, 3 times 3 is plus 9. I'm going to combine these before I multiply the 2 through the brackets. So I'll have 2 times i squared plus 6i plus 9. And then I will multiply the 2 through the brackets to see if I get my original expression. 2i squared plus 12i plus 18. That does match. So that means we did everything right, and this is the correct answer. Okay, so it's always good to check to see how well you've done. 
Let's do the next problem. We have 3x cubed plus 3x squared minus 36x. I've noticed right away just by talking it out that I have x in every single one of these and I haven't done a problem where I have x in every single set yet. So I know that I'm going to need to pull out an x at some point here. Uh, I also see that I have 3 in common between all of them. 36 is divisible by 3. So I can factor out a 3. So I'm going to pull out a 3x and I'm left with x squared plus x because I pulled out a 3x. What times 3x would get me 3x squared? Just x. Minus, uh, let's see, that would be 12. 36 divided by 3 is 12 and then the x is gone. So we just have x squared plus x minus 12 that we need to factor. We drag our 3x along as usual. We write our binomial brackets and I place in my variable at the front as always. I need something that multiplies to negative 12 and adds to 1, positive 1. So it's got to be a number close together. 3 and 4 multiply together to get 12 and if I want the uh, x in the middle to be positive, I'm going to have to put the bigger number that we're multiplying together as positive. So it's going to be plus 4 and negative 3. And yes, it does matter um, like where the signs are uh, because if you have them flipped around, you'll get a negative 1 up top and that will not be considered correct. So that is our answer. If we were to check, um, multiply it back through, we would find out that it is the exact same as the original. In your booklet, there's a couple of try it on your own as well as on the screen. Um, pause the video, do some of these on, on your paper, uh, see if you got them right uh, when we come back. Okay, welcome back. Um, let's give it a go. So we've got n squared plus 3n minus 10. Let's see, nothing can be factored out. Greatest common factor is 1, so I can jump straight to writing my brackets. I've got n as my variable, so that goes first. And I think need numbers, need two numbers. Multiply 2, negative 10, and add to 3. What two numbers multiply to negative 10 and add to 3? Well, I actually tried some of this before, if you remember, because I was trying to get it, uh, the numbers that add to uh, to positive 6, I found out that it was uh, 5 and negative 2 that add to 3. So if I had positive 5 and negative 2 that add together to get positive 3, that would, that would work for me. Let's check to see. n times n is n squared. n times negative 2 is negative 2n. 5 times n is positive 5n. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. We're going to combine like terms n squared minus 2 plus 5 is plus 3n minus 10. That's the same. I shouldn't have put a box around this. I should put a box around this up here. So ignore that box. But it is the same. So we've checked and that is correct. We've got one more. Let's do 2y squared minus 18y plus 28. I see that they're all even. I have a 2 in front, which is a little bit unusual. So I see, I see a greatest common factor of 2. No variables in all of them, so just a 2. So we pull out the 2, and we're left with y squared. What times 2 gets you negative 18? Well, minus 9y. And then half of 28 is 14. So now we're looking to numbers that multiply to 14, add to negative 9. I'm thinking right away two negative numbers because we've got a negative value here that's pretty large. Uh, what two numbers multiply to four, uh, two and seven and then those add to nine. So I'm thinking negative two and negative seven. Let's try them. Two, y, y goes in front because that is my variable. I said negative two and negative seven. Uh, negative two times negative seven is 14. Uh, negative two times y is negative two y y times negative 7 is negative 7y. We add those together, that does get us negative 9y. So that is our answer. We can put our box around it. Definitely feel free to check. 
Uh, it's definitely important when you're at all unsure or even when you have larger problems. Um, let's see, I believe that is it. Yes, it is the exit slip there. So do that in your booklet. Uh, and I thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments um, or send me an email. Thanks very much, everyone.